Hello everyone. If you are a software engineer and deal with the databases, then this video will be definitely of interest for you. In this video, I'm going to talk about stored procedure. That what exactly are stored procedure, why exactly they are used and how they are used. Now, the why part is extremely important because there are lots of uh, pros and cons which people talk about the stored procedure. But in this video, I'm going to urge you to use a stored procedure as much as possible because there are multiple advantages of using a stored procedure. Now, what exactly is a stored proc or a stored procedure? So a stored proc is nothing but a function or you can say a function which people write in the database. And these particular stored procedure are available in pretty much all databases, be it Microsoft SQL Server, which is a relational database, be it PostgreSQL or MongoDB in different forms or the other, these stored procedures are available. And here we'll see the advantages and many times these are not being talked about, but they have a wonderful use cases and wonderful advantages in the system wherever you use it. So let's get started. Now, first of all, what exactly is the stored proc? Stored proc is something which is a method written in the database. So let me first go to a diagram and show you what exactly I'm talking about. So let's say you have a database and you have some backend service. Now you want to run some of the commands on the database. It could be, hey, I want to transfer 100 rupees from Anubhav's account to Arjun's account. Arjun is a very dear friend of mine. I want to transfer 100 rupees to him. What exactly would happen? I would make first SQL command to de deduct 100 rupees from my account. Then I'll have one more SQL command to add 100 rupees to my friend's account. And then, of course, I'll commit. So basically, begin and commit transaction things will be there. And then there will be a lot of crews and fronts. So here, if you see the number of commands which you will run in the traditional way where you don't have a stored procedure is that first of all, you will begin a transaction and then you will run the command, command one that is transfer 100 rupees to Arjun and then deduct 100 rupees from Anubhav's account and then commit. So basically, you would need to run four different commands on the database to get things done. Easy, simple. This is how we do and it is quite simple to let me just try to help you to visualize as well. So I have a database with me so that it, it just gets easy for you. So let me zoom out a bit and let's see. So this is what you are going to do when you deal with the transactions or when you deal with the databases. So let's say you want to transfer 100 rupees from one of the accounts and you want to give 100 rupees or 10 rupees here to other account. So first of all, let's see what's the status of the database. These are the two people, Anubhav and Arjun. Anubhav has 100 rupees and Arjun has 510 rupees. Now you would need to run bunch of commands. So the command number one would be begin transaction. You will run begin transaction. This particular thing can be run from your Java code, from your command prompt, anywhere, doesn't matter. Now the transaction has begun. So this is the command number one. You ran a command, you got the acknowledgement. And then this is something which helps us to take the lock on the rows. So this is the second command. I have covered a detailed video on database deadlocks. Here, there you can see that importance of this one, but here it's not important. So you run one of the command to take the lock on both the rows. Then you run the third command. That is, let's remove the first one here. You run the third command to update the balance. That is deduct the 10 rupees and then you run one more command. So we have the fourth command to add 10 rupees and then you need to run the commit command. So when you run everything and then you do a select start from accounts. So basically from the database. Now this database can be anything. It could be MS SQL, Postgres, doesn't matter. And this one I'm using is the Microsoft SQL Server, but does not matter. So here you see basically the 10 rupees got detected from Anubhav and 10 rupees got added for Arjun. So you can see the number of commands which we had to run on the database and this is needed. If you want to do something, you, you need to run these many commands. Now imagine in terms of backend and the database services, how these things would look like. So here you would have this database 
and here you would have these backend surveys and the database here and see the number of network or the chattiness the number of to's and fro's you have to do on the over the network to get things done so you run a begin command you run a commit command and there are two commands or in fact three commands actually to get things done so you can see the problem here right that there are too many to's and fro's you need to do on the over the network and it is something which is not even optimized to be done so what could be better here so here what we could do is that instead of running all of these commands instead of running these to's and fro's one by one by one what if what if i don't even have to run them and just run one command over the network and that command can be called as trans for money from account one to account two transfer x rupees from account one to account two so basically you just send this message to the database and in the database so let me just delete all these stuff so that we can visualize better so you run this command on the database and and in the database, what we do is that we define a function and function does the same thing. So in the database, what we'll do is that we'll define deduct 10 rupees from Anubhav, add 10 rupees to Arjun. So basically these things or these, the multiple steps like begin transaction, commit transaction and take lock then deduct and rup x rupees from id equal to one and x rupees to id equal to two so these things would be defined in the database as well so database contains the information as well that is it has disk and it and also it contains these commands as well so now you will just be calling this command basically you can define this command as update account balances and in that function or the stored procedure all these things will be returned so over the network you will just send this one command and everything will run in the database itself so you will have lesser number of twos and fours. so that's the advantage let me show you how it looks like in the in the sql database so that we can understand it further so here were the few commands so what we will do is that we'll create a stored procedure that's a function in a database that's what it is and we'll take the three parameters from account id to account id and the amount and then the same thing which we were running you know one by one we'll put it here one after the other and then we'll declare that particular stored procedure in the database itself so this particular thing will be stored in the database now whenever i have to call i i'll just run this command in my java code c sharp code doesn't matter so if i run it it will run everything run all the three commands in one go at the database and will give us the output so the advantage here is that you make one command and you get everything so you don't have that number that much amount of network chattiness so that's the advantage here so there are two advantages you can see one is the as you can see it's obvious it's a network reduced network traffic and the second advantage is that um, these stored procedure they are compiled at the at the database level the first time which means that by compile i mean that the query plan and those things are defined once and then when you run the same stored proc again so it runs faster so there are a bunch of database optimizations which are done for the stored proc because now database knows that these are the series of commands which i have to run and what would be the best path or best way to run it in an optimized way so those optimizations are done by the database so those are the advantages and now you could see that how do you run it you actually just run this particular line of code in your java c sharp code etc and and everything happens at the database level so yeah that that's what i wanted to talk about there are a few other advantages which is there in the microsoft docs but these were the main advantages i found which would actually help you to decide that's a performance part but then there are other other informations as well 
like security and other, other like the maintainability and reuse of the code but frankly i would say the performance is something which which would be the deciding factor so yeah that's it from my side i hope this video was helpful and i hope you would be inclined towards using a store proc compared to having those chattiness over the network and that will help you to have a faster uh, uh, faster throughput overall and better performance so yeah that's it from my side for this video till the next time bye